I've known people that are in charge of purchasing for large organizations, you know, and they get gifts of a car or a house or a vacation or whatever. And why? Because people want that guy who just represents the organization. He's, it's not his money, but he represents the money. And people treat him really well. And, and it's kind of important to treat them well, too, because why? They represent the organization, and you treat them badly, and you're not going to get whatever from them. And so um, Paul is saying this. He said, so oh, here's, here's what I was going to say about that. So supposing you represent an important organization, you get treated importantly all the time because of what you represent. Could you come to the place pretty easily where you feel like you're important? Okay. Yeah, buddy, you want to disrespect me? I want to tell you something. I just bought a $6 million yacht, and I just purchased a $4 million home, and I have the ability to make you or break you. And that's true, but it's not him that has the ability. And if the master or the guy that he's working for starts to hear him bragging, sometimes he'll have to tell that guy, you know, I hired you to brag about me. Your job is to brag about me. You didn't buy that yacht, buddy. That's mine. Yeah, well, I purchased it. I did all the work. My money. See, it wasn't yours. Paul said, it's not expedient for me. In other words, it's not the best thing for me to glory. He said, I'm going to glory. He said, but understand when I glory, understand what we're glorying about, God, not me. And he said, as well, he said, if... Um, he said, I'm not going to glory of myself. He said, because though I would desire to. He's honest about it. He said, you know, though the job has a way of puffing me up. He's, he's just being honest. He's saying, though, I mean, he said, I've been there. And he had. I mean, if you sat down and had the Apostle Paul tell you stories, I mean, the guy had seen some things. And he'd done some things. There wouldn't have been a man in the world that could have compared experiences with the Apostle Paul. And he said, though I would desire to glory, he's being honest about what's natural in us. He said, I shall not be a fool. And now he gets real about it. He said, for I will say the truth. But now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. So he said, I'm going to be careful not to try to exalt myself. And then he's going to talk about an experience that happened in his life that helped him to see the cross of Christ in the life of a believer. And that's what we'll look at. Lest I should be exalted above measure. What's above measure? It means sufficient. It means what's needful, what's necessary. In other words, Apostle Paul didn't have to go around dragging his head saying, you know, woe is me. I serve God Almighty Himself and I have the power of God in my life. And so um, it's just terrible, you know, because I'm nothing. It wasn't about him being nothing. It was everything about God. And uh, could, could he smile about it? Could he say, this is wonderful. Hey, this is great. This is the best thing in the world. You think the Apostle Paul was probably a pretty happy fellow? They put him in prison, him and Silas. He's probably going to be put to death from all, for all he knows. He's in a dungeon, has no idea when he's going to get out. And him and Silas are singing praises to God. Paul's a happy guy. He's a happy guy. And he understands that he represents God and so life's good. So he says this, lest I should be exalted above measure. In other words, he says there's a certain point when it would become about me instead of about him. That would be exalted above measure. He said, there was given me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. So God permitted something to buffet him. Now a buffet is an old English word for a blow or a punch. In other words, a buffet is not an open hand, a buffet is a closed hand hit. You buffet somebody, it's going to be a, okay, it's a blow, it's a hit. You trade buffets with somebody, you take turns punching each other. All right, so Paul said, lest I should get too big for my britches. That's modern English. That's probably actually old English, isn't it? Too big for your britches. Uh, uh, Charlie, look up the colloquialism there and share it with me sometime. All right. There was given me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. He said, there was given me some things that kept me from getting too big. Here's what it was. Well, he doesn't say what it was. For this thing besought I the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. Now, 
tradition, church tradition, and I think it's fine. Don't, you know, people get so silly about it. I've heard people preach message. Paul said it was a thorn in his flesh, and if he said it was a thorn in his flesh, then it was a thorn in his flesh. I believe the Bible. I heard that preached one time. I got thinking about that, and I thought, man, if Paul had a thorn in his flesh and didn't just get the thing out, he wasn't. The, I, I thought he was brighter than that. So, uh, seriously, this, let's think about this logically. He said a thorn in the flesh, and the idea is something that, you ever had a thorn? You ever got some, some sharp splinter or something in your flesh? And you couldn't get it out, but every time you touched it, it just made major pain, and it just bothered you. Folks, man, I, I, I'm going to say it. It wasn't a thorn. I, I just don't think it was. And the reason for it is because it was an actual thorn. Paul was a tough fella. I hate to dug it out. Seriously. Or what would have happened is the thing would have rotted and the flesh would have come out. In other words, it would have been temporary. But he had something that physically was, a, was constantly a thorn in his flesh. It was constantly something that bothered him and, and was a reminder of his weakness. Church tradition, traditionally the church has always believed that Apostle Paul had bad eyesight. And one of the reasons for that is because of what happened when he was blinded on the road to Patmos. Now God healed him, so God could have healed his eyesight. Uh, but he had, there was a light so bright that it blinded him, and um, scales fell off his eyes when he was healed, so there was a real problem with his eyes. Maybe, what did I say? Did I really? That's good. All right, Paul, Paul exiled to the Isle of Patmos. Thank you, Brother Ken. I woke you up. All right, so he's on the road to Patmos. <laughs> road to Damascus, <laughs> the road to the Isle to Patmos is an island. <laughs> That's really funny, actually. All right. You people, you've got a weird sense of humor. All right, so Paul is on the road to Damascus. He gets blinded. And so people think, well, that was his eyesight. Um, he always used an amanuensis. You know what that is, the guy that copies and writes for you. It was common for people to do that, to have a copyist. In other words, they would dictate a letter and have somebody write it down have a professional. But Paul always did, and then every now and again he would sign a letter with his own hand, and he'd say, I, Paul, have written it with my own hand. So he always used somebody to write for him, and we believe the reason for that is because he couldn't see. He was very literate. He would have possessed the capability of writing, but it's because of his vision. And so Paul said, every time I get to thinking I'm something, I can't do something I'd like to because I can't see, if that's what it was. But whatever it was that was his infirmity, and infirmity is a weakness. Something that keeps you from being able uh, to think that you're really something. I'll tell you something. The time you start to brag about the natural abilities that you have or start to think you're pretty good at something, it can, you can be humbled like that, can't you? You know, I mean, just physical ability, the ability of your flesh to do things. Anybody here have special stamina? I mean, you can just go and go and go and go and go. I'll tell you what, something will happen sometime that will take that away from you. And you realize, man... I didn't have stamina, I was given stamina. In other words, I was just made that way. I was high energy or whatever. Uh, and, you know, I know guys, man, they're high energy. And they're like, man, you know, I can do this and this. And it's like, well, you're high energy because God made you that way. You know, and not because you've done anything special. You know, you're incredibly smart. I mean, just way smarter. You're quicker, you're faster, you're wittier, and you're just smart, very intelligent. And uh, you start thinking, man, I'm really something because I'm smarter than all these people. And then one day, you know, you get a fever or something and you can't think straight and you start acting a little loony and you realize, man, I can't even control my brains. I, I, I'm out of, I'm my, I can't even control my mind. And you realize, wow, I mean, it really humbles you. You think, man, my, my intelligence, I can't, I can't even hold on to it. I've lost it. And uh, you can lose anything that has to do with physical abilities, with the way you're made. And what that's a reminder of is that God made you. God made you. And He made you, if, if you're the fastest... If you're the tallest, if you're the shortest, if that's good, uh, if you're the whatever, God made you that way, so don't brag. And Paul said, something that keeps me from bragging is my inability. And that's what we want to talk about this morning, what we want to point out, is that your inability is many times what the cross of Christ is for a believer. The cross of Christ is not about what you can do, it's about what you can't do. The cross of Christ is not about what you can't do. It's what you can do. And if you think about it, my friend, if the Apostle Paul is an individual that can barely see, isn't it something that he traveled the way he did? 
Isn't it something that he preached and established churches the way that he did? Isn't it something that he accomplished? I mean, how could he have written...